tuned in to the Hood Paralegal Podcast. This episode two in the title, this episode is most hated but most emulated, the exploitation of the black culture. Now this episode, we got a special guest tuned in with us and gonna be dropping some jewels on you. My boy Marcus Roundtree, and also my brother Javon Curtis gonna be joining us later on. So without further ado, I'm gonna introduce my brother and let him go first and drop these jewels on us right quick. Mm -hmm. What's good, everybody? I want to thank everyone who took some time out there today to tune into the Hood Paralegal Podcast. I want to thank my man, Corey, for giving me the opportunity to present myself on this platform. Now to get into the most hated, but most emulated exploitation of the black culture. Don't show I find it ironic and downright comical that in America, if not the whole world, how black American culture is looked down upon, frowned upon, chastised and criticized. Yet the very culture the real class to hate is the very culture in most cases that is imitated. Why is it that people who are deemed inferior are mimicked through music, dance, style of dress, language or slang as they call it, and just basic human mannerisms? In my opinion, people who claim to hate any person are truly taking into consideration how much power and energy is required to give of themselves. Now, I by no means think that most people who admire and consume black culture for their entertainment consume the culture through a hater's mindset. But what I'm trying to understand is, are they consciously or unconsciously taking the culture through art, music, dance, etc., and knowingly profiting more from the black culture than the people, very people who created the culture? I tend to look at the lack of profiting from the very culture that one has created has to be acknowledged by our own people first. As they say, he who doesn't know their history is going to repeat. Even for those that don't read, we have a multitude of old school movies and films from back in the day, like the Fire Heartbeats or the Temptations, where it shows artists were exploited due to their lack of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the business side of the very art they were creating. These are some examples on social media of black people who go viral, such as Ghetto Spider-Man, who gained 300,000 followers out of nowhere and yet had no idea on how to monetize the very audience that he cultivated. Another example is a young creator of Fayetteville, Jalea Harmon, who choreographed a dance called The Renegade. The dance ended up turning on the platform TikTok with millions of people posting themselves doing the dance. Even major superstars join in on the craze doing the renegade. And yet, it was another creator who profited most on the dance. A white influencer slash creator by the name Charlie D'Amelio, who inspired fans to get her the name CEO of the dance for popularizing it at one point without crediting Herman. Herman has since starred in and choreographed a music video and earned endorsement deals with Samsung and LG. However, her fame isn't nearly as lucrative as the Emilio's, who has a Super Bowl commercial, a Dunkin' Donuts drink, and a Hulu docuseries. The Emilio is now TikTok's second highest paid influencer on the Forbes list, where all the two creators are white. At some point, I think that we, as a people, need to ask ourselves, can we and should we expect others to spend money with black people when the money that black people earn is rarely spent within our own communities? It seems like every community but our own is spending money consciously within their own communities. The only thing we have control of is our own actions and reactions as we go about our day to day. Through knowledge and understanding of the dy dynamics and obstacles we face on a daily, we can hopefully find and gain the wisdom to move our lives towards our goals and dreams. Our natural talents and charisma are God-given. They can be imitated, but never in a natural way. Anyone who has been through the trials and tribulations that life throws at us knows that in instances, life is not fair. But you also can get out of life what you put into it. Collectively, we can share our knowledge and build upon it for the betterment of our social and personal lives. Prior to Facebook in the late 90s, early 2000s, there was a platform called Black Planet. 
Like Planet didn't make ten percent of the revenue that Facebook, Instagram, and a lot of other current platforms have. The challenge of making money has compelled some junk black creators to bond together to leverage their collective power. Collab Crib, a house in Fayetteville, Georgia, Georgia serves as the headquarters for a roster of young black internet stars who have a combined social reach of 10 million. In the years since Collab Crib's founder, Keith Dorsey, who scouted and manages the collective under Young Guns Entertainment, has seen that combined influence pay off such as appearances at Atlanta Hall Games, documentaries by Hulu and the New York Times, and the Amazon Prime sponsorship deal. Now, despite Collab's career success, creators associated with the house are still underpaid anywhere from 50 to 75 percent compared to collectives in L.A. The influencer pay gap, Instagram page, documented how companies pay white creators to endorse their products and expect black creators with comparable followers to do the same for less, sometimes free. Keith Dorsey reported that a white creator once told him they were paid 80000 for the same kind of post that one of the collab career members was paid 10000 for. Creators are literally building these apps with black culture without black creators ever seeing credit nor dividends. With black people not owning the infrastructure of these platforms, the history of our culture will continue to repeat itself in regards to exploitation. We are not going to see the most benefit or visibility from the culture and content until we part ways from these platforms. And this is a prime example of institutionalized racism. Now, currently, there's a platform that is attempting to remedy some of these problems called Fanbase, which has raised $3.5 million in crowdfunding. Fanbase allows users to monetize the social media interactions that we take for granted. Similar to Instagram, users can upload pictures and videos instead of Fanbase exclusively profiting from the content. Creators get a cut. Users can like a post for free or they can buy 100 loves for $1. Loving they post sends half a penny to its creators. Users can also pay a $4 subscription fee to creators who can choose to post behind a paywall. Fanbase also is in the process of helping users copyright their dance moves. In my opinion, some of these platforms should be called Exploited Ground and Exploit Book. Now, once we are aware of these unjust practices, we have a duty to take action. We have to know our worth, disrupt the facts, and control the narrative because content is king. Just like rapper Lil Boosie said when Mark Zuckerberg kicked him off Instagram, we have to create our own platforms and that is the only solution. Ownership is key and we must emulate what fan base is doing, which is come together and leverage our collective power. And doing this will hinder the oppressor's ability to interfere with our economic advancement. We have to create platforms that create culture currency, which means platforms that allow black creators to explain their genius and receive fair compensation for their cultural influence. I'm going to pass the mic to my brother, Javon Curtis. Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to this episode hosted by Hub Paralegals. I'm Javon Curtis. Most hated but most emulated the exploitation of the black culture. Let's continue, let's continue. One of the greatest propaganda campaigns of all time was the magical marketing of the myth of black inferiority. African-American no matter how savvy, educated, or financially privileged, cannot completely avoid the conditioning that resulted from increasingly sophisticated bombardment of subtle and not-so-subtle messages created to reinforce how different and inherently inferior blacks are when compared to whites. We are strong survivors of the middle passage, the whip, and the change. We have survived centuries of terror, humiliation, unification, and deprivation. We are smart even when our literacy was illegal. We learned quickly, invented, discovered, built, taught, and excelled against all odds. We are creative, making a way out of quote-unquote no way and constantly birthing and rebirthing American art and culture. So then why after all this time, we calculated the achievement of the American dream, are we still ranked at the bottom of almost every good list and at the top of every bad list? Why, despite our apparent strength, intelligence, and resourcefulness, do we continue to lag behind and languish in so many aspects of the American life? The answer is intricately linked to the hundreds of years.